Okay, here I'll go through an example of a commodities forward contract. This is a contract that's negotiated between a buyer and a seller. First I'll explain how the contract works, then I'll show how to calculate its fair value to determine any gains or losses on the contract, and then finally show how to record the contract on a balance sheet and on the income statement. Okay, a good example of these contracts would be where a farmer is selling grain in the future when the crop is ready to harvest and a food manufacturing company like a cereal company would be buying, buying grain in the future when they need it. Both want to lock in prices so they agree on a futures exchange price. So at the contract inception here or the start date of the contract, the buyer and a seller agree to buy and sell at a specified forward rate or forward price here. And by doing that, the buyer of this commodity, in this case the food manufacturer, sacrifices the possibility of having to pay a lower price in exchange for eliminating the risk of paying a higher price, whereas the seller of the commodity, the farmer in this case, sacrifices the possibility of selling at a higher price in exchange for eliminating the risk of selling at a lower price. Okay, in the future when this exchange occurs, this spot rate here will most likely be either higher or lower than the forward rate agreed on. So looking at it in terms of our seller, the farmer here, he would have had a loss because he uh, gave up something here of greater value than he, what he received. He could have received um, 69 cents a pound, but he only received in this case 61 cents a pound. So in the case of our uh, buyer, the cereal manufacturer, he had a gain because he uh, received something here of worth 69 cents a pound when he had to only pay 61 cents a pound for it. Okay, to account for the contract, I'm going through an example here by looking at the cumulative change in the fair market value of the contract from period to period, and then look at these changes from the beginning of the contract to the end of the contract. And to do this, we have to compare the current period's forward rate our price here with the contract forward rate or price and that's the agreed on price between the buyer and the seller here and then multiply the difference times the quantity that's under contract and that would be the fair uh, market value of the contract for the period that we would be looking at. Okay, going through an example here to determine the fair value for each period, starting with our May 1st period, we're looking at our forward rate here of 0 0.660, and we compare that to the 0 0.610 forward rate here at the contract start date, or that's the agreed forward rate here, and the difference here times our quantity would be a $5,000 increase here. Then looking at our June 1st period here, we take the forward rate of 0 0.670 and compare that to the contract start date here the agreed upon rate of 6.10 and then that also was an increase times our quantity here so we had a six thousand dollar increase in the market value of the contract and then looking at our last period here the June 30th period we take the 0.690 uh, forward rate and compare that again to the contracted rate here of 0.610 and taking that times our quantity so we had an eight thousand dollar increase here in the fair market value of the contract all right, to determine the fair value for a forward contract, we have to discount the fair value for the period back to whatever days are remaining in the contract. So looking at our May 1st uh, period here to the June 30th period, we have 60 days remaining. So we discount this $5,000 back to its present value. And in this case, I use a 6% discount rate, and that's worth $4,950 here. Uh, and then for our June 1st period, we'd also have to discount that back because there's 30 days remaining in the contract here from June 1st to June 30th. So discounting that back here uh, for 30 days using the 6% discount rate, I got $5,970. That's what the $6,000 would work here at its present value. And then for the last period here, the 630 period, well, there isn't any uh, discounting required because there's zero days remaining in the contract. So its value is here is $8,000. So to determine the accumulative amount, we have to subtract out the previous period. And in the, for our May 1st period here, we didn't have any amount here with contract resort zero. So that was um, the change here would be $4,930. And then for the uh, June 1st period here, we'd have to subtract this $4,950, the present value from the 
period, uh, present value for the period here of $5,970. So we'd have here a change of $1,919 for the period. And then for the last period here, we'd be subtracting out the $5,970 present value for the June 1st period from the $8,000 uh, fair value for the period here. And we had a change here of $2,030. So totaling these uh, net changes here, the $4,930 plus the $1,019 plus the 2030 here for all these changes here in our present value uh, equals $8,000. And that would be the change for the contract here from the uh, uh, start date of the contract here to the end date of the contract. Okay, in summary, to determine any gain or loss on the contract depends on whether you're the buyer or the seller. So looking at our farmer here who was selling the uh, uh, grain here under contract, he would have experienced the loss because he would have received less here based on the contract price than had he sold the grain here at an increased future rate. And then looking at our buyer here, the uh, cereal manufacturer, he would experience the gain because he would have paid less for the uh, uh, grain here under contract than had he purchased it here at an increased future rate. Okay, to record this forwards contract on our balance sheet and on our income statement, what we would do is set up a forwards contract and investment account here as an asset on the balance sheet, and this is where you'd recognize any gains or losses on the contract, and then we'd also have a gain or loss here on this forwards contract as part of our net income on the income statement. So looking at our example here, where uh, from the buyer's perspective of this contract, where he had a gain each period, we would take those gains here and we'd debit our forwards contract for those gains and then we'd go and we'd recognize this gain here uh, as part of our net income on our income statement where we would credit the gain here for the, the amount of gain that they had each period. And then from the uh, in case of the seller here where we had a loss, we would have credited this forwards contract or reduced our forwards contract for the loss each period and then we'd go and we'd recognize that loss here by debiting our gain or loss contract on our income statement and then at the end of the period we would close out this forwards contract account here in this case for the gain we would have uh, credited here for eight thousand dollars here and then we would debit or increase our cash account for the amount of that gain on the contract. In summary, the key point of a forward contract is that its current value here is represented by the present value of these forward exchange rates. That is, you must discount the contract's fair value back to the days remaining in the uh, contract, and that the total change in value of this forward contract is measured as the difference between the forward rate here agreed on, agreed on at the start of the contract and the spot rate here at the uh, forward date or the, the contract settlement date here. And then you take the quantity that's under contract times that difference and that would give you the total change in value of this forward contract.